So right now we have some towers with some simple uh, projectiles that can damage the, the enemies when they're hit. But we will have to add some debuffs to the towers and we will also have some uh, element types to the tower so that, for example, uh, the green monster will take less damage from the green tower, right? Or the poison tower. So we have to add some extra scripts to handle um, the debuffing part and the tower type part. So in this video, we are going to add the tower type part. Um, if we go to the, let's see here, the scripts. Inside the scripts, we have some different scripts here, but I think I'm going to create a new folder called towers. Yeah, and inside this, I am going to move the tower script. And then I'm going to create a new script called fire tower. And I'm going to create one more called frost tower. Ah, there was a folder, sorry. It's of course going to be a new sharp script. And then we are going to have a poison tower. And at last we're going to have a storm tower. So, first of all, we can open up these. And when you have opened up your script, you need to inherit from the actual tower because our towers are going to be, um, our specialized towers here, are going to be towers, right? So instead of inheriting from mono behavior, they're going to inherit from the tower script here because the tower script has lots of uh, information in it or uh, stats in it. It has projectile type, it has an animator and damage and all that. And I don't want to write the same code over and over again for every single tower. So to avoid writing all the code we have here for every single tower type, we can actually make a generalization and say that our fire tower is a tower. So now the fire tower has all the functionality that the actual tower has. Um, here. So now it has all this functionality here. When we have done that, we need to do the same for our storm tower and for the other tower. So let's just replace mono behavior with tower everywhere. There we go. So now all our towers are of type tower. Um, right now we can just delete start, and go to the frost tower and delete start we don't need any functionality right now we're gonna add some in a second and the tower has already it started and everything so that's fine if we save this and there's one more thing we need to do because right now we don't want we don't want to be able to have a tower as a simple tower in our game we want a fire tower a frost tower poison tower or a storm tower right so the fact that we can actually have a tower if we go to prefabs and select our towers and fire tower here we'll see that we have a tower script here we don't want to be able to do that we would like to have a fire tower script on this one instead because we're going to make some specialized behavior at some point so the fire tower has a debuff with a dot on it or something so the fire tower uh, the tower here needs to be removed and to make sure that we don't place a tower script anywhere in our game by mistake we can go to the script here and say that this tower class here is abstract so public abstract class when something is abstract it means that it can't exist on its own anymore you can't put the script on anything in unity but it can be used for inheriting behavior so you put a lot of behavior in the script that other classes can inherit and expand so that's like, like a very quick lesson on inheritance. So if we save here, you'll see that there's a problem here. It actually says there's something um, wrong here with the tower debuff, right? Associated script cannot be loaded because it is a abstract class. So instead of having the tower script here, we will have to select the fire and write fire and then select the fire tower script. And then go to the frost tower and select the frost tower script. And the poison tower and select the poison tower script. And then in the end, select the storm and write storm. So right now, nothing has changed at all because there's no functionality in the actual scripts. But you'll notice that even though the storm tower, for example, doesn't have any 
thing in the script, but it inherits from tower, well, then we are actually able to see that it has the projectile type, it has the speed and damage and all that already, because it gets it from the storm tower, gets it from the tower script. So if we would play our game right now, everything should be working exactly as it did before. We should be able to place our towers, we should be able to play the game, and the tower should be able to shoot the monster here. And as you can see, it does shoot the monster. So nothing has changed yet. So now we need to give our towers a type, because they can be frost, fire, poison, or they can be, um, what's it called, um, storm. So if we go to our, let's see where we want to do this. We want to open up the script first of all, and let's go to the tower here. So we need to create our own type. So we can write outside the class scope here, before this, so that we can reach it in all other classes. We can write public enum and say element. And this element can be storm, it can be fire, it can be frost, and it can be poison, and it can be none. Okay, now we just created our own element type, and we need to go to this uh, to the tower script, and we need to create a new type. So we need to make an instance of this or variable of this. So down here, we can make a property called element, and we can call it element type, and Let's make it protected set so that we can set it from the other towers. So now this tower has an element type. Inside the frost tower, we have to make private void start. And inside start, we will have to set the element type, right? So we need to say that our element, um, element type equals element dot uh, frost. Okay, so the reason that we can reach element type here is because up in our tower, we made the set of the element type protected. If it's not protected like so, well, then if we go down here in our frost tower, it will complain and say that we are not able to access it, or actually we are because this one is public. So we can actually just make it private for now. So if it's private and we go down here again, let's try. Um, frost tower, then we shouldn't be able to see. Now it's complaining that we can't set the element type, so we have to tell the tower that, well, this is protected. And this one is public. There we go. Just that was just to demonstrate, right? But we need this public because we need to get the element type at some point, but we don't want to expose the ability to set the element type from outside so that a monster, for example, can tell a tower that it should be another type, right? So we make it public so that we can get it. So the monster can check what kind of type it just got hit by. And we make this one protected so that the tower itself can set its own type. So this is frost. If we copy and paste this into the others, we can set this one to poison. And we can go to the storm tower and set it to storm. And then we can go to the fire tower here and set it to fire. So now they all have their own type. So this element type here needs to be passed on to the projectile at some point so that when a projectile hits a monster, the monster can check what it just got hit by, right? Because the way I've made it is that if a fire monster gets hit by a fireball, it will take less and less damage the more it gets hit, right? So first time, it takes full damage maybe, next time it takes half damage, and then next time it's like half the half. So it, it, we keep reducing the damage it takes when it's hit by its own element. So for example, a um, purple monster will take less damage from a storm tower, for example. Yes, so we need to give this to the projectile so that it can use this. So go to the projectile. We can make a variable private uh, element, call it element type. So this is its own element, the projectile's element type. We need to set the ele element type by saying this dot element type equals parent dot element type. So now we have just set the projectile's element type because the tower, which is a parent, 
has an element type and we're going to pass it on to the actual projectile now. So now the projectile has its element type, but the monster doesn't know about the element type yet. So inside the monsters on trigger enter, I guess, or take damage. We have a take damage somewhere. Um, there we go. We need to make sure that the monster knows what it just got hit by. So we're going to make an element called damage source. So the monsters take damage function tells it how much damage to take and tells it what it was just hit by. And if the monster is hit by its own type, it will reduce the damage taken. So the monster also needs a type. So if we go up here, we need to set an element type for our monster. So let's just do that. Um, yeah, let's just do it here. Make a private element, element type, and let's serialize this field. So now we have an element type, and if we save this and jump into Unity, and go to our prefabs and monsters, and select the blue monster, for example, we will see in a minute when it updates. Oh wait, we will have to fix the compiler errors first. So take damage doesn't take an element type right now inside projectile. So we have to tell the take damage function because we just said, well, the monsters take damage function. Let's see where it is. Here, the monsters take damage function needs an element type. And right now, we are not telling it what kind of element it needs to take because it takes the damage, which is this part here, but we have never given it this part. So we need to say projectile element type. So now it everything is fine. We save, jump into Unity, wait for this to be fixed, and find the prefabs and the monsters, monster. And let's see, it has an element type called storm. Okay, well, the blue monster isn't a storm monster, it's a frost monster. So select it as frost. Green monster is a poison monster. Purple monster is a storm. And red monster is a fire monster. Okay, so now we have set the correct type on every single monster here. Now that we've set the type, we can go back and inside the where were we take damage, we will have to write some code so that we can actually um, take the correct damage. Let's see, we need to do something about the type. So we are going to say if we are active, we say if our damage source, uh, DMG source, is equal to the element type. Okay, so if the damage source here, whatever we're taking damage from, is equal to the monster's element type, then we say damage equals damage divided by some kind of value, right? So we need to make an invulnerability value. So if we go up here, at the top, we'll set the value, let's see, private int invulnerability equals two. So it will take half damage from its own type from out of the gate. So right away when it gets hit by a fireball, if it's a fire monster, it will take half the damage that other monsters would take. So damage divided by invulnerability. And then we say invulnerability plus plus. Then we add one to it. And down here we simply just reduce the health, right? So this is all we need to make sure that the monsters doesn't take too much damage. So if we save now, and let's try if we go to the game manager, here, where do I have that? And this should be something called spawn wave. Go. And we make sure that it just spawns a one on zero. That's a blue monster. So if we save this and try to place a frost tower, we should be able to see the f that the monster takes less damage. Let's see if we take a frost tower here and spawn the monster. And 
you can see it doesn't take that much damage, right? So it, it lost like this. So if we would go back in and place a... Ah, let's just do it with exactly the same. Let's just try to make this random again and hope that we don't get a blue monster from the out of the gate. And place it here again and go. Of course, we've got a blue one. Let's try one more time. And purple one. And you see that it takes way more damage, right? It already take, took more damage than the blue monster. So that's the point of the, the type, right? So they take less damage from their own type. That's what we want to do in this video. In the next video, I guess we are going to take a look at um, some, some debuffing. So thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe, like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter. Also, um, if you like my tutorials, consider supporting me on Patreon or on uh, my own homepage by going to the bottom link. If you support me on Patreon, you'll get every single project that I have created for um, this uh, YouTube channel. And if you support me on the bottom link, you will simply get one of the projects as a standalone product. So thank you very much for watching.